Let's build an S3 file explorer in just a few minutes. I've already connected my S3 bucket to Retool. And to view its contents, I can just click Preview and see the results as a JSON object with a contents key, which contains every object in my bucket. It looks good, so we'll save it. And then to display the results, we can drag in a table component. And here we can say query1.data.contents. So now my table is pulling in all my objects from my S3 bucket, and it's helpfully paginated for me. Now let's say we want to have a title above this table. We just drag in a text component and say view files. And everything in here is actually just markdown, so we could make it a title. And let's add a fun emoji here. Great. Let's say we want to be able to search the table. We can just drag in a text input up here. And down here we'll say search by prefix. So I want to be able to type in something like 11.png and have this table filter for just this selected row right here. The way we'll do that is we'll come down here to the query, and where it says prefix to filter results, we'll pass in the variable text input onevalue which is whatever the user is typing into this component. So we'll save this query. And now when I type in something like 11.png, great, the table filters for just that row. Now let's say we want to be able to click on a given row and maybe get the URL of that object. So what we'll do is go into the table editor and we will add an action button. And that action button will copy the URL of the given object. So when we click the button, we want to copy to clipboard. And the value to copy is going to be the URL of this particular object, uh, which happens to come in a standardized format in S3 buckets that looks something like this. And this is actually just the bucket name, so we can replace that with query1.data.name, which is the name of our bucket. And then this is actually just the key, so we can come in here and say table1.selectedRow.data.key. Great. So now, if I were to, for example, click on this second row, and click copy URL, you'll notice the URL has been copied to my clipboard. I could open a new tab and we can see the image. Let's say we want a button to download all of the data that our query returned. We'll drag in a button, say download all, make it pink. On click, we want to export data. And here we can just say query1.data.contents. So now if I click download, Great, there's our CSV. Let's say we also want a button to be able to copy all of the URLs of the S3 objects that are in our table. We'll say copy all URLs. And here, we're gonna to wanna to copy the clipboard. And just like we did earlier, we're gonna write some JavaScript to construct the S3 object URL. But in this case, since we're doing it for every object in the table, we're gonna to have to map over this table. So we'll say table1.data.map for every row. We're going to construct the string here. So the bucket name was query1.data.name. Then it was s3.amazonaws.com. And then it's just going to be i.key. So now you can see here we have an array of all of the S3 object URLs. So when we click copy, all of those URLs are copied to our clipboard. We could, for example, go into an Excel file and paste them. Now, the layout of the buttons in the table isn't looking great here, so let's do some quick rearranging. We'll move this table here, and let's move our title a little bit over. And now we can actually drag in a container to hold these buttons. So let's move the container up here and we can bring this button inside the container. Let's add a title. And we can call this bulk actions. And because everything in here is marked down, we can make it a title. And our table is looking a little bit crowded, so let's hide some of the columns we don't care about as much. Great, this is starting to look much better. Let's allow our users to upload files to our S3 bucket. 
We'll drag in a container. Maybe give this section a title. And let's drag in a text input so that the user can specify the name of the new file. So here we'll say file name. We'll give it a better icon. And we actually have an S3 uploader component, which allows the user to select a file from their computer and automatically upload it to S3. So we'll say select file. The resource we want is the same S3 resource that was selected down here. We could override the bucket name if we wanted to, but it's already specified in the resource. Here for the file name, we can just pass it text input to dot value. That'll be whatever the user's typing here. And after we upload a file, we'll actually want to run query one again so that the table refreshes because the table's pulling from query one. So this should work, but let's say we also want to add uh, ACL permissions. So we want the user to be able to specify whether this has, for example, private or public read or public read write access. Let's actually drag in a radio component to allow the user to select that. So here we'll say CL permissions. This is just an array. So we can say public, public read, and public read write. This is actually private. And we can paste that into the labels. And by default, we will select private. Awesome. So now we should be able to write something like, you know, new file underscore one. We'll select a file. And it's uploading to our, our, to our S3 bucket. And once that's done, you'll notice the table refreshed and we could actually search for it. So we could say new file underscore one. There it is. Copy the URL and we can see the image in a new tab. Let's allow users to click on a row in the table, preview the image of that S3 object, and then download it. So we'll drag in a container. We'll align our table with that new container. We'll drag in a title. This will say preview file. And for fun, we can add a magnifying glass. And now let's drag in an image component to actually preview the image. So we'll drag that here. And we'll just change this URL to be the S3 URL we constructed several times already, which is going to be query one dot data dot name. So the bucket name plus S3 Amazon AWS.com slash and then we will say table one dot selected row dot data dot key, which is the key of the row the user has currently selected. So now you'll see if I hide this query builder and actually click on a new row, the image will update. Now let's say we want to show some metadata about each image. We can just drag in a text component. And here, anything written inside of here is just HTML. So let's make a bold title here. And we'll say size. And then here we can actually just say table one dot selected row dot data dot size. So now we're displaying the size of the selected image. You'll notice that it updates with every new file we click on. And finally, let's give the user the ability to download this file. We'll drag in a button. We'll say download. And on click, we're going to want to run a new query. So let's actually open up our query builder here. And we'll create a new query. And this query will connect to the same S3 resource. But instead of listing all the files in the bucket, we want to download a file from S3. The bucket name is already specified in the resource. You could override it here. But what we'll need is the file key. So this will be table one, dot selected row, dot data, dot key. So now whatever row the user is clicking on, it'll just extract that key and then properly download the file. 
So we can actually take this app, which is done, into presentation mode by clicking the play button up here. And now we can actually use it. So let's say we want to click on a row, maybe download that file. It was just downloaded right here. And our search feature, copying to URLs, our bulk actions, and our uploading files all work.